great coming to Alan's, Alan Bryce's property to see his whole property, what he's done as a land care warrior over the decades, and to see how it's come through and coming through the fire. His dam in particular is just amazing. It's a, it's, a, it's a large dam and it's got so much wildlife and a lot of natural regeneration on there and the water quality is beautiful. My name's Alan Bryce. Uh, on the property of Rangey Park at Harrogate. It's been in the family for five generations. It's, it's particularly uh, a, a grazing property, sheep and beef cattle. And we saw some degeneration years ago and we wanted to protect the creeks and the dams and, and the laneway, so we re the place, starting back in uh, early 1980. Oh, there's so many benefits of having a good healthy dam. There's clean water and good wildlife habitat. There's water for livestock, water culture if, if needed, and firefighting and, and recreation amenity. The ecosystem and, and groundwater recharge, there's a lot. The dam was put in there in 1978. And there's a lot of areas fenced off that aren't grazed anymore. Some farmers might think, well, okay, you're probably smaller. But we put the same amount of sheep back in the paddock with the land care fenced off and they did better because of the shelter. The main thing is to try and reduce the amount of traffic and grazing pressure. And so if you have livestock getting in there and it's not controlled, apart from grazing pressure along there, they'll do a lot of hugging and just the traffic, the disturbance of the water's edge and even wading into the water. So it's really good to try and manage that and if possible, completely exclude it. You mean, might mean you need to um, reticulate water out into watering points and have an emergency access point as well and manage your overall grazing pressure because there might be other things contributing to that as well, like kangaroos and what have you. So fencing really helps with that. Great to see this little nest in, in amongst some sedges just in the dam there and see the chicks in this little nest and they're bobbing their heads around. There were swans nesting on an island as well and there were the blue-billed ducks and there was at least 15 species of birds that were in the immediate area just while we were there. There's probably a whole lot more actually that would be there overall. Um, so it was really good to see that in their breeding. Well, probably the rarest thing I've seen here is the flame robin. But they come across from Victoria in the winter time. I like the magpie because he's very cheeky and it's great to see the swans nesting up there again. At the deeper end it's 25 feet, up the other end it's quite shallow, but as the water evaporates we use it, and the receding water line still leaves areas there for swans and ducks and whatever to feed. Fire risk really comes down to the whole property in and of itself. Really the dam is not necessarily a major threat. As such, you still need to manage fire risk as well too and, and set up your, you know, with your fencing, make sure there's access to the dam and to, so you can do maintenance of the dam and the dam wall and the spillway, but also fire breaks. You should be confident to be able to keep livestock out and let that, that dam recover and still be safe from fire. Look at your total property management plan, really, in terms of fire risk. I may be the owner, but I'm also the caretaker and for future generations, uh, my family won't have it forever. Someone else will come along. So that's vitally important. But I just love being here, seeing all this nature around you, it's, it's marvellous.